Thank you to Skillshare for being the sponsor of this video. One of the topics that I'm really passionate about is slide writing. And slide writing is the science or the art of creating slide presentations in the style of leading consulting firms like MBB and this is McKinsey, BCG and Bain. As you probably already know if you're a regular watcher of this channel, I worked at McKinsey for six years. I taught slide writing inside the firms to junior colleagues, but I'm also giving trainings on slide writing to corporations and also serve as a lecturer on communication and slide writing writing, for instance, at the University of St. Gallen MBA program. So today I will help you to build your slide writing skills as well. And I will do this by reviewing slide presentations that you sent me. So I asked you on Instagram to send me some of the documents that you're working on, for instance, from university projects. And I received several submissions from you. So we're going to look into this in a moment. But before we do that, I just want to be really clear on one thing. So maybe some of you are asking yourselves now, where did all my hair go? And due to the special situation in Germany, all the hairdressers are closed at the moment. So no, I did not bribe any professional to cut my hair. I just asked my sister to do it. And if you're following me on Instagram, you know exactly what happens. And you also know why this maybe was not the best idea. But let's not talk more about this right now. Welcome to another coffee break here on my channel Firm Learning. It's already pretty late here in Germany, so I'm drinking tea. Please help yourself to a cup as well but now without further ado let's jump in so i'm looking now at the screen in front of me where i open several of the presentations that you sent me so of course we won't go over every presentation slide by slide but i always selected a couple of slides that i believe will be most educational to discuss so just bear in here with me i trust there are some very very important and valuable slide writing lessons that we will now jointly identify and find while looking at these pages and here let's start with this one this seems to be some type of university presentation about an economics class, the Turkish growth miracle. So Frank, I have no idea about the topic. So let's just look at this page. What do we see here? So my first impression is that this page looks kind of messy. But of course, the question is, why does it look messy? What makes this page look messy? And if you look into this, probably the main reason is that this page uses all kinds of different font sizes. And this is really a problem that you see quite often. So let's look here, of course, the action title 28, here this title 24, red curve, depreciation 18, this one 20, this one 18, 18, here in the chart 12, but here also in the chart 18. So it's really all over the place. And I believe this really significantly adds to this unclean, to this weird, unorganized look. So the key rule that you always want to follow when doing these types of presentations, that the body of your slide, so everything except for the title and maybe some footnotes should be the same font size. So now let's look at the chart. Let's look at how this chart is created. And the first thing that pops into my eye are these very thick dotted lines. So usually if you make dotted lines, you don't want them to be so dominant. You want them to be light and in the background. But here, because these are one of the thickest lines in this chart, they're very dominant, right? And this just doesn't look right. And next is here the different colors. So this is a green line, a red line, line, a blue line. The general rule is that whenever you use colors on your page, it either has a direct meaning or there needs to be a legend. And again, this will look cleaner, nicer, more sophisticated. My last comment is just switching here between these two slides. So what you see here is that several elements are jittering, are moving. This is also something you want to avoid. So here, let's look at the action type. You see this is moving. This means that this isn't nicely and properly aligned. And of course, this will be noticed. If you save this as a PDF or whatever, and you just scroll through it and you see all these elements moving from page to page, this just looks not aligned, not professional. The same, of course, here also with the text, with these bullets, and same thing here with the footer. Why is this moving? Again, make sure that you have no jittering on your pages. This just looks unprofessional. Next presentation. So this is apparently a deck about Rockefeller. So some information, some facts on him. And here my first impression is that this does already look a bit more organized, a bit 
more clean than the slides that we saw before. And if you look at this, you can see some good slide writing principles followed here. And if you're more interested in that, because I cannot now go into every little piece of that, I actually created a whole course on slide writing on how to create PowerPoint presentations in the style of leading consulting firms. So if you're interested to that and want to learn more, check out the link in the video description. I have over 10,000 students taking the course. I trust that might be interesting for some of you. And now I want to focus on this specific page. And again, it looks not too bad. So it has a proper action title. All the text here is of the same text size. So one thing that you could do to further improve is add separator lines. So for some reason, this still looks a bit unfinished to me. It seems like something is missing here on this page. And I believe one thing is these separator lines that you could include between these elements to make it look a bit more organized. Then the next question is also, so what exactly is this? So these elements are introduced here. What elements are these exactly? What am I looking at right now? What is the title or the organizing principle of these elements? So if I understand this correctly also from inferring it from the action title, this is probably something like the competitive advantages that Rockefeller had or the things that he did, the measures that he undertook to increase its market share. And if this is what it is, then also add this as a little subtitle here just to make it more clean. And next one, let's look at the chart. And again, here basic slide writing principles are followed. The one thing that I want to give you as a general tip, and this is that whenever you use percentages, always add the percentage of what are you looking at? The percentage of what? One question that you could potentially ask yourself when you look at the market share is that whether this is the market share measured in units or the market share measured in US dollar. So this here just remains unclear and this could be easily fixed just by making yourself a habit of always writing percentage of what? So of the market in units or the market in dollars. So let's move to the next presentation. This looks like some type of business pitch of a product which seems to be a chair that is included in a backpack. So interesting idea for sure. Again, let's just pick one slide here, this one. Let's just focus on this. And this apparently is the page in this document where the market and industry for this product is supposed to be explained. So here the first thing that you see is that it's really hard to understand what the message of all of this really is supposed to be. What is now really the thing that I should take away from this page? And here the clearest thing that is missing is the action title. So here you see the title is just market and industry. This is pretty much just the header, but a clear action title is missing. And this is exactly why it's just super difficult to really understand what the message is. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, if you don't know what an action title is, then check out my video that I made specifically on action titles, where I explain what it's all about. Action titles are a fundamental piece of every slide presentation. Check out the video here to learn more about it. I discussed this in the past. And now if you look into this, you see again, different font sizes used. This is font 20. This is font 18. Of course, this here is something that you can barely read. Near the general rule is, especially for professional presentations, never just copy paste charts like that. But especially if you already have the numbers, as they are already apparently present here, just recreate the chart in PowerPoint. It will always look much better and much cleaner. But here so much remains in the dark. So pains of the industry. What industry exactly are you talking about here? So is this the sports and outdoor market? Is this the industry. As far as I can see, this was also not properly introduced on the pages before. So really hard to understand. Same thing here for this chart. So what exactly is this chart supposed to tell me? So understand that here below there's some type of market sizing for the Portuguese market. But here this chart says user penetration worldwide. So the user penetration of what? And here as far as I understand, Portugal seems to have a rather low to medium user penetration. So what does this mean? Is this good? Is this bad? So again, I really have no idea at all what this page is supposed to tell me, what I'm supposed to take out of this page. So now next presentation, this is a set of slides that apparently talk about networking. And overall, I must say they look professional, they look very well done. One thing though I just want to put your attention is that on a page like that, there is just lots of text. And in almost all situations, people will never read this much text, even if they get this handed as a report or handed as a business presentation. This is just something that will not be 
be read. And what you could easily do here is just to deword the whole page. So take out lots of words by keeping the full meaning of what you see here. Because indeed, here full sentences are used as if you would read a book. So on these slide presentations, you usually want to say as much as possible with as little words as possible just to declutter it, to deword it. And the main way to do this is of course rather use bullet point style instead of full sentences. So just one little example. Instead of writing, the value of this information depends on the trust within the network. Just write a bullet saying information value depends on network trust. So one little thing that you can often do to take out words is to delete articles like the to deword the page. And indeed another way to improve your communication and business skills is to take classes on a platform like Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creative and curious people. You can explore new skills, deepen your passions and get lost in creativity. There are classes on marketing, personal branding, presentation skills and many more. All of these are topics that are highly applicable to a career in consulting, banking or corporate. And the best thing is that I made a slide writing class for Skillshare so you can access and enjoy it as a Skillshare member. Personally, I recently took the class Productivity Masterclass, Principles and Tools to Boost Your Productivity from the fellow YouTuber Ali Abdal. It's a great class that taught me many new aspects of productivity and I very much enjoyed how you applied the Pareto Principle or the 80-20 rule to productivity. Classes on Skillshare are specifically curated for learning. There are no ads, they're always launching new premium classes classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And the best thing is that it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Skillshare created a special offer for subscribers of this channel from learning. And so the first thousand subscribers of me that click on the Skillshare link in the video description will get a free trial of the Skillshare premium membership. I hope this helps you to explore your creativity. Check it out, link in the video description. So now to the next presentation. And here the one thing that I want to point out is how too much graphical things, how too many animations can really take away from the content of the slides and can even also look unprofessional to some extent. So here if you go over there are so many animations, so many colors that do not really add much to the actual content, to the actual meaning, that the things that you actually want to say with your slides get completely diminished. So here just be sure that you use graphical elements like this and bold colors like this very very selectively usually less is more and the same is true for animations. Usually there are no animations in presentations like this. One of the reasons being that often these presentations are not even getting presented but they're just printed out as documents and then you just go over these documents in a meeting and everybody just has a handout of this presentation document in front of him or her. But even if you are presenting it on a display, animations is just not the look and feel that you should go for for C-level presentations. It will be perceived as unprofessional. This is just not what is expected from you in these environments. So now next one and again this seems to be from a university project and the reason why I included is just because I wanted to show you the bit different type of style that this presentation is using. This is a presentation style that you will see more frequently in banking. So in most consulting contexts pages like that would never go into the main deck. It's just far too much text. Things like this would go in the backup but for whatever reason bankers just like to put even more words in their presentations than consultants. But this is indeed what you will find if you join a bank. And just want to also make you aware of one other speciality that you often find in these banking presentations. And this is the so-called football field chart. And this is exactly what you see here. Bankers use this all the time to display spreads and company valuations coming from different valuation types. Well, the problem is nobody understands this outside of banking. I tried to make charts like this several times time in a consulting context and I've yet to meet a client that can understand and read this type of chart. So my takeaway here is that there are some differences in consulting compared to banking presentations. Though I would argue if you want to learn the presentation style that will make you successful in C-level environments, in boardroom environments of large corporate firms, then I'd argue that the consulting style probably will be a bit more successful for you. This is at least from my experience what works much better 
better if you want to communicate your insights to your leadership in most business situations and environments. So I hope you found this helpful and I want to say a big thank you to everybody who volunteered to send me their presentations here for review in this video. This of course is much appreciated and I hope that there were some learnings for many of you out there. But of course I also want to be clear that there is no such thing as the law of slide presentations, right? So after all, everything that I said to you is from my personal opinion. Of course, if you ask other people, they might have a different opinion. And of course, if you see something differently, very happy to discuss this with you. Just leave me a comment below in the comment section. Very happy to interact here with you and also to learn from you, from your perspective and your experiences. Now, if you took any value out of this video at all, please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and also subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all the content. If you want to see even more from me, follow me on my Instagram. My handle is Firm Learning. I also have a mailing list you can sign up via the link in the video description. Thanks again to Skillshare for being the sponsor of this video. There is a link to Skillshare in the video description and I can only encourage you to make use of the free trial that is provided there. In addition to that, as always, of course, a big thank you to all the members of Firm Learning as well. You are the OGs. You're really supporting here the course on Firm Learning. So thank you so much. My name is Heinrich. I'm releasing videos every single week on Saturday here on my channel Firm Learning. So looking forward to see you again next week. Until then, good weekend to all of you. Keep learning. Cheers, Heinrich here.